Cascada 2023.2 is out and this release is packed with a lot of exciting new features and improvements. I'm especially interested about the updates to constraints, which we will look into in a bit more detail. But first let's dive into one of the most requested feature, the audio support. The main new feature of this update is that you can now import audio files into your scene. This has been a requested feature for a long time since it can help you to sync your animation to music or a speech. Currently, the most common audio file formats are supported. The imported audio will be displayed in the outliner also as an object and you can change its behavior, for example, mute it or change when to start this audio. You can also drag and drop audio files into your scene and I was quite surprised that it even works with Soundly so I can select a part of a sound effect and just drag it to Cascader. This is so much fun. The video mockup feature got much much better based on my few tests. It's significantly faster. In the release notes it states that it's up to five times faster. In all of my tests it was at least three times faster than previously. But if that's not enough, even the results are more accurate, there is less jitter, it seems like it recognizes ground level much more accurately and the hand position during the animation is much more natural. It feels like it can now start competing with other video mocap solutions, especially that you can use this one for free without any limitations, and then use the built-in fulcrum cleanup combined with auto physics and other tools to clean up your results. All of these animations that you can see are the raw results, I didn't modify anything. I wanted to see what kind of references work and what doesn't, and this one with two characters is quite funny how it changes. As with previous updates, the auto-posing was improved. This was teased already in a couple of months ago by one of the developers, and backbending should work much better with this configuration. And there are improvements for the finger auto-posing as well, which is only available in the paid version. The graph editor got some love as well. Now you can see and edit values that influences physics, like secondary motion, and also you can edit boolean and integer values, for example, the visibility of a mesh or other parameters like this. There were a couple of changes regarding rigging as well. The UI was updated and twist option in the rigging tool got more customizable. They have added links to the rigging tools panel which directs you to the relevant section in the documentation. You can now change the overall mass of your character now in rigging mode. For this you need to select all of the rigid bodies or the ones you would like to change and in commons rig additional click the change rigid bodies mass. This will show the combined mass of the selected rigid bodies and if you change the value then the mass of each rigid body will scale relatively. They also added quad mass support. Previously when you imported FBX file the meshes got triangulated, which in some workflows was quite inconvenient, but now you can have quads and keep the clean topology in Cascader. If you want to update the mesh in your existing projects, I have a video that can help you with that. Trajectories can now be viewed not only in global space, but also relative to your pivot point. For this you need to activate relative to pivot option in the scene settings, and to choose your pivot point you need to right click any object in your scene. The constraints got improved as well. They were already a part of Cascader, but now you can define multiple ones and switch between them really conveniently. This is quite an important topic and it deserves its own video, but for now just a simple example that can get you started. You need to search for the hand triangle in the outliner and select it. Then hold down shift and select the points of the object you want to constrain, for example this knife. Make sure that both the triangle and the points are selected and go to commons, rig additional and constrain points. Now you also need to enable the constraint otherwise it won't move together with the hand. So now you have to select only the points that you constrained and under the point IKFK settings enable the constraint. Now I will quickly do this for the other character the same way and to switch between the two constraints you can change the constraint index and under these settings you can see which constraint index belongs to which constraint. 
And also they added that the constraints are now visible in the viewport with this circle. All of these parameters then needs to be keyframed correctly. You need to make sure that the correct behavior is set for the interval you need. In this example, the first constraint is active with index 0. Then it gets deactivated as the knife falls. And after it falls, the constraint gets enabled again, but now with index 1. There were a couple of changes to Python support as well. The main one is that they updated Python version 2.3.11. Uh, it was previously 3.8.6. So now you are able to use the new features of Python like match cases. And because of some other changes, if you are using the Cascader bridge add-on, it should be updated together with Cascader because there was a small change that makes the old version of the add-on incompatible. Also USD support was added, which is in theory should be the ideal option for integrating Cascader into different workflows. But as of now, it's only in alpha version. And since Blender also doesn't fully support USD, I didn't have any success trying it out. Hopefully with future updates, we can use USD instead of FBX. I think these are the main updates, but if you want to see the full list, check the release notes. And I'm curious which one of these are you most interested or excited about.